Hello, I'm Natalia Komovnikova, independent researcher, and I'm here with my project Corpus Building, Classification and Preservation of Contemporary Anti-War Poetry in the Context of Electronic and Social Vulnerability. Well, I've always been excited in the ways uh, people's hidden feelings are expressed, nevertheless expressed, in their writing. Uh, I came to uh, understanding that I needed to look deeper into that when I was in Ghent as a fellow with Ghent University studying clandestine uh, literature of uh, the Netherlands resistance during World War II and as compared to the subsequent um, clandestine literature in the Soviet Union. Uh, in the 1960s, which was, I mean, the underground prints, and we compared how it was organized and uh, how the, the literature was disseminated. And it was at this point when I realized it is not only how people uh, produce this literature and make it public, but it is also what they feel about it and how their inner feelings, their fears, and uh, their deep emotions, their anger is expressed even when they don't want to do that. This is why I realized I needed something more than I was capable of. And uh, thanks to Willard McCarthy, whom I was introduced to last year in Krakow at the conference in the Agilonian. He suggested that I should subscribe to The Humanist. And sure enough, two weeks later, I got a letter with the information on the fellowship. And I thought this was that sign. And this was the chance I needed to take because the uh, Austrian Academy of Sciences was the only one who specifically said that they were eager to take a person who wasn't prepared in the digital sense and could do all other things but that. And I thought, well, that's me. Would you take me? And so I was taken, and I was particularly interested in the sentimental uh, sentiment analysis, and um, I was catered to my excitements, expectations. I was shown how it's done. I was shown different tools, different platforms that work all across the world as regarding or whatever. Uh, specific requirements, legal requirements there are in different countries. And I'm now very well equipped and I can work from any part of the world. And apart from that, I'm also very interested in the issue of trauma. Because uh, when you are in clandestine literature, anti-war literature, for instance, um, you are initially and naturally uh, perceived as this bold and daring hero who has no fear, who is producing clandestine forbidden literature for the benefit of humankind. What we forget is that this person is also afraid and being a hero is a commitment and it is also a tremendously traumatic experience. Uh, therefore, I thought to myself, well, what if that's a trauma, we can apply the same or almost the same methodology to the trauma that was incurred on the person while he or she was engaged in clandestine literary activities. This is not standing tall with a sword to protect a castle, but it still takes lots of courage. So we need to take a look at the trauma markers uh, that are visible in the text that have been researched in the fields of psychiatry and psychology. So with the help of digital tools, you can apply that to the text. Well, the thing is, what I find exciting about it is that uh, digital technologies is not uh, the only restricted to the specific list of tools, platforms, and solutions that we can apply to our projects. 
What uh, digital technologies also do, they perform the function of a firewall between you and the text. Because if you deal with trauma long enough, you also feel traumatized. And uh, this um, vicarious trauma is also very palpable, it's under your skin. So what the, the image that I have in mind, the digital technologies, are not only the tool, the sword, the pen, uh, the easel to create something, they are also asbestos gloves that enable you to hold something really hot and really painful without hurting yourself. When you have a lot of material, you are sometimes not able to do that. And for self-preservation sake, there come digital technologies. And this, this is called digital humanities. It's not so, this is also only because it's about humans. It's about being humane and being humane to yourself. The next step is coming home, taking a deep breath, getting everything that I have learned and collected here together and analyzing, working, keeping on, finding people who are interested, building teams, getting together. Because talking about trauma is helping people who are in danger to express themselves and people who are listening to open up. Well, you know, I have a variety of projects that go beyond the scope of digital humanities. I've just finished a book on the Russian translations of Ulysses and on the mysticism around the history of six translations um, of Ulysses that were <coughs> undertaken in the 1930s in Russia and uh, with the consequences it had on translators and hence this general belief that everyone who touches Ulysses is going to die soon. So I've just finished a book on mystical thinking in literature and translation, how it affects the perception of literature. But coming back to what I have been doing here, uh, you know, literature is about trauma and is about resolving the trauma. People write to resolve the trauma, people read to recognize their trauma because um, uh, hasn't been hasn't it been widely quoted that the biggest joy of reading is self-recognition. So by learning to recognize the trauma and trauma markers with the help of digital technologies so that we don't harm ourselves and that so that we can do more, we can teach people how to be happy. Thank you for this amazing opportunity and for all the effort, kindness and hospitality. Uh, that I enjoyed every moment staying at the Austrian Academy of Sciences. I would like to say to everyone who is listening to that, don't be afraid. Go and do what you think is right. Stand tall. Don't be afraid of projects, people or decisions you make. Because this is only the sound of our steps that scares us. There is much more here. Be, uh, take courage and be happy. That